Now we're going to go to the next brain structure and brain circuitry, okay? And this is the anterior cingulate gyrus. So if you take a look here, let me give you some perspective. Uh, with my arrow, this is, the, uh, this is the corpus callosum, okay, connecting two hemispheres. These are the frontal lobes here. And, and this structure uh, it, it ra sort of wraps around the corpus callosum all the way back here and back to the front of the brain is the cingulate gyrus. And I had mentioned there are three primary brain, stru brain structures in the limbic system that I, that I want all of you to know, and this is one of them. And, and so there are a, a multitude of different kinds of functions that uh, are associated with different parts of the cingulate. But we're looking here at the anterior cingulate, okay, and the front of the brain, and we're looking at this area right here. And this is actually part of the frontal lobes. And frontal lobes do a lot of different things that we've certainly talked about, but one thing they do is that they, a lot of the circuits are inhibitory circuits that control emotions and, and impulses. And certainly the anterior cingulate uh, does that. It's the other brain structure that is just loaded with GRs. Okay, so uh, first off, under normal circumstances, okay, not hypercortisolemia, but normal circumstances, in a fashion that's somewhat similar to what we saw with the hippocampus, uh, when you have release of cortisol, it's going to get up in the brain and it's going to activate the anterior cingulate big time. And it too then regulates the HPA axis. So again, we have top-down control. And, and so it's really like you have two brain structures that are working in harmony with one another to shut down the HPA axis. But as you might imagine, uh, hypercortisolemia can, can cause problems. There's yet another circuit that begins with the anterior cingulate, and this is the anterior cingulate amygdala circuit. Now, we talked last week about the amygdala playing an important role in the perception of potential danger in the environment, and so it plays a huge role in fear, but also in anxiety and anxiety disorders. Now, I hope you can see this. It may be a little bit hard to see, but here's the anterior cingulate we're, we're looking at from a somewhat different angle. Uh, PFC is prefrontal cortex, and there's a lot of connection between the PFC and the anterior cingulate. But the anterior cingulate uh, sees little arrows. What this suggests, these are pathways that go down to the amygdala in the, both the right and left hemispheres. And under normal conditions, then when you activate uh, with cortisol, the anterior cingulate, it will come down and it will shut down some of the activity in the amygdala. Okay, so one uh, additional example of top-down control. So to summarize, the anterior cingulate, uh, in terms of affect regulation, gets turned on by cortisol, and it has two main effects, and one is to shut down the HPA axis, and the other is to reduce the activity that you see in the amygdala. Okay, and, and when the anterior cingulate is damaged by hypercortisolemia, uh, then it's, it, it, like the hippocampus, loses its ability to engage in normal affect regulation, and it's a very big deal. So both of these brain structures are simultaneously uh, getting slammed by toxic levels of cortisol, and both of them are beginning to really uh, get destroyed.